Hey guys, today I'm going to explain you what is hyperconjugation. Okay guys, so I'll start with a simple example. Um, I'll take 2-methyl-2-butene. So I'll just draw the structure. Um, it's, it'll look like this. Um, uh, C. Sorry. C. H. Methyl groups. Um, here, Me means methyl or CH3 simply. So, this is 2 methyl 2 butene. See, it, there's a double bond here. Okay, so this is the part where we have to concentrate. So, basically, there's no particular uh, definition for hyperconjugation. Um, I'll just explain you here. Hyperconjugation is actually a reverse process of inductive effect. It happens in the direction where there is lesser inductive effect. In this case, the inductive effect here is considered less. So, what happens here is um, there is there are um, the hydrogen in this carbon. In this carbon, it uh, once again, I'll just change the color. Okay, the hydrogen in this carbon will give its charge to this carbon or this bonds. The bond here, the sigma bond. So this bond breaks and and shifts over here. So a double bond will be formed. But this structure is highly unstable. So uh, due to resonance, the next pi bond or yeah, the next double bond, this will shift towards the next carbon. Okay, so now overall, they <coughs> these will get um, a change in the charges. This carbon gets a negative charge because, of course, the electrons are transferring from this part to this part. And since this carbon is losing this bond, it gets at first a positive charge but again since it's making a double bond with the next carbon the electron is, uh, is shared between these two carbon and hence that positive uh, charge is compensated by the negative charge so this will be a neutral part but soon it will form a double bond here and this double bond just goes off okay so finally we get the structure okay so this is the final structure so you can see that the bond has shifted from this car uh, CH to this part and formed a double bond and this double bond which was over there it shifted to the next carbon and gave it a negative charge so this whole process is called hyperconjugation it's actually not well defined but uh, we understand them using the examples so I guess you understood hyperconjugation now uh, let's move on to its importance and the mm, let's say the things that are needed for hyperconjugation to take place the things which are important okay so firstly the first thing that is important is that always only sorry um, the first point always only a CH bond undergoes delocalization that is the bond between a carbon and hydrogen will delocalize and no other uh, bond will delocalize okay so actually that's the starting step okay so um, only CH bond will first delocalize okay the next part is this basically takes place only through the alpha carbon um, the alpha carbon or we can say the carbon adjacent to the carbon which undergoes hyperconjugation so alpha carbon okay so these two are the most important things that you got you gotta remember and another factor that affects uh, uh, takes place is the bond angle okay the CH bond angle uh, CH um, angle Okay, yeah, CH 
slash bond angle okay so I'll just explain you with another example I'll just change this okay so now everything's gone so I'll draw a new structure okay so I'll take C H this has a positive charge positive charge in the sense uh, it has empty orbitals pi orbitals p orbitals actually so we know that p orbitals will be like this let's draw the empty orbitals okay so these orbitals are empty so uh, to hyperconjugation to take take place we remember that the first hydrogen bond breaks so same process takes place um, this bond it breaks this becomes uh, H plus the bond comes here positive charge and the electron cloud will be partially shared with these pi bonds empty orbitals sorry okay so that is hyperconjugation now I'll just draw it so um, let's change the color okay so we have certain electron cloud over here right so this part this bond the electron cloud here is parallel to this empty orbital so what happens is this cloud will partially try to move towards the next carbon so what will happen is it will bend okay yes like this so there will be a partial sharing of electron clouds this partial sharing of electron clouds is nothing but the formation of a pi bond so now we understand that how a pi bond is formed actually okay so next process is I'll tell you which factors affect uh, hyperconjugation uh, like which factors are required for hyperconjugation to take place firstly I told you that only a CH bond is possible okay so CH H we take only H because it's a relatively very really small size and the bond can be easily broken when compared to other atoms so that's the first point the next point is the bond angle here it should be either the CH bond should either be parallel to the empty orbital or close to parallel so it can be like this also so, but it should be close to parallel only then hyperconjugation takes place that is the shifting of electron clouds and another part is like if there's a single bond over here the carbon can freely rotate the carbon can uh, once again I'll draw it the carbon can freely rotate so every hydrogen can come into this position and form a uh, pi bond so there are three hydrogens that can form uh, share um, pi bonds so uh, I guess you understood up to this part but remember one thing if this carbon is not rotating and in either in any way if this carbon uh, cannot rotate then we cannot consider all three carbons all three hydrogens so then we have to consider according to the bond angle if this carbon is not rotating then this hydrogen will be exactly 90 degrees will be 90 degrees so 90 degrees would mean a very big distance hence hyperconjugation won't take, take place and this hydrogen is nowhere close to this part this orbital and in this case also hyperconjugation will not take place but if it's parallel or as I said close to parallel only then hyperconjugation takes take place okay so the next part is the carbons which all carbons uh, can uh, participate in hyperconjugation so in this case uh, only alpha carbons by alpha carbons what I mean is uh, this carbon needs hyperconjugation right it needs stability through hyperconjugation so only a carbon next to it just adjacent to it the next carbon in either sides can take part in hyperconjugation and those adjacent carbons are called 
alpha carbons so and these hydrogens only can participate the hydrogens in the alpha carbon so that's basically about um, alpha carbon theory okay um, so I guess we've co covered the properties part so I'll just explain you the stability uh, in stability so for stability the compound which has more number of alpha carbons with hydrogens in them will be more stable when compared to other compound with lesser alpha carbons because it will have lesser possibility of stabilizing with alpha hydrogens than the uh, compound with more number of alpha, alpha carbons which will have more hydrogen in this case all three hydrogen can take hydrogens can take place in hyperconjugation for example if there isn't a hydrogen here instead we have uh, oxygen then hyperconjugation will not take place because oxygen cannot be rotated freely and the hydrogen position will also relatively change because oxygen is a highly electronegative atom so that's basically everything about hyperconjugation um, hope you guys liked it and uh, please do subscribe thanks for watching